Hello, and welcome back to the Pokemon Emerald or Grass playthrough with me, the Jolly Monkey. And me, Sven the Crusader. And we're yeah. wandering around the caves and coming across one of my favourite Pokemon in this generation, actually, Aaron. Yeah, actually, if you can take the botherness to train it, pretty good Pokemon. Yeah, Aaron is basically a rock and steel type, which... Well, whilst it's not effective against water and grass types, it is a pretty strong Pokemon against practically everything else, and it's got, like, one of the toughest defenses. So, yeah, if, like Sven says, if you take the time to train it, it can become a pretty powerful po force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And <laughs> quite a point here. <laughs> Sorry to laugh at your Pokemon, but, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh well, Grovar got revenge by using bullet seed in its eye, although it's kind of a big target if you look at our <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this part's basically just us wandering around the cave searching for Steve! <laughs> and, yeah, sorry for the haphazard editing there, I've been trying to just give- Oh, now I remember why I kept this in. Yeah, Lombard's learning a move called Fake Out, which is an interesting but- Ultimate kind of pointless move, which it's basically, I, it's kind of slightly more useful than grab, but basically it's a technique that you can only use right at the start of a match, and it basically just does some small damage and causes the opponent to flinch, which, you know, honestly, there's not that much use to it. Yeah, and only useful at the start of the match, right? Yeah, it can only be used at the start of the match. Oh, damn it, that... <laughs> that explains why it never worked for me. Yeah, and if you do it any other time, it will just say it's a, it's a complete failure, which it it gets re it makes it ultimately a useless move, because you can only use it once a match, and the damage you do is practically insignificant, so it's not worth it. Yeah. Speaking oh. <laughs> of annoying things... <laughs> oh god, Zubat. Ugh, Zubat. Yeah... The I've edited out of the air. <laughs> yeah, these li little bastards. Let's just say you're going to be seeing them a lot. Um, not in this playthrough because I did out most of the encounters. But trust me, I'll scream. I'll be screaming my head off at these bastards. Tell I like the makers to go away. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. The problem with Zubats is they're very frequent, and they also have abilities like Super Sonic and later on. Poison type moves, which can poison and confuse you, making your trek through caves very, very tiresome. Yeah. I don't care if I am training, I always run whenever I see one of those. <laughs> yeah. Same here, unless I have an electric type, then I can take fun in frying the hell out of them, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be honest, they have evolved from gold bats even more infuriated because you have exactly the same reason as the Zubat, but it's evolved, and I apologize for that haphazard editing there, I don't know what happened. Um, but at last our suffering comes to an end, because we found Steven! The mystical. Yeah, and he pretty much, apparently he likes to spend his time staring at stones, which, heck, well, that's his business, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I guess everyone needs a hobby. Huh. <laughs> yeah, Steve, you're gonna be seen several times in this game. He's kind of a. That's kind of redundant saying this in Pokemon, but he's kind of an odd character who wanders around and occasionally says hi and, well, tells you some useful stuff about the area. And that's about yeah, it. Yeah, really. in short, he stalks you. In short, he stalks you like Scott. Yeah. Except less creepy. Yeah, in fact, practically every single character stalks you, although Steve can be useful on occasion, but you'll see how later on. In fact, actually, Steve yeah. had a very important role in Ruby and Sapphire, but it was kind of diminished in this game, but more on that when we get to it. Yeah. Ah, right, this specimen is now going to give us the old rod, which is basically how you, well, can start fishing, basically. I don't show it in this part, basically because I wanted to get the heck off this island whilst I could, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, the old rod is 
the most basic of rods you can get, and really, all you can, it's kind of weak, because all you can really catch of it is Magic Cup, and possibly a very low level Goldeen, if you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you That's might want to wait, yeah, you might want to wait to get a good rod. Which is, li it's literally cool now, I'm not, oh, oh never mind. <laughs> <laughs> And now we leave the island of obsessive genius battle fans. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and now we've landed in Slateport, or to be more accurate, the Slateport Beach. Yep. <laughs> I just love the random I love... first. You can have this! There you go. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Hello, Rudder Stranger, have this! Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah. We got someone pestering us on the Pokemon left, but thankfully that means that basically, after we beat the Elite for Roxanne, we can challenge her to a battle again any time if we so desire. Yeah. But enough about that now, Ursaino wants to beat the crap out of us. Yeah, like. Oh, I'm having flashbacks to do for town. Let's not remember Genius <laughs> Battle. <laughs> stop it! Stop it! Oh, jeez. So, well, uh, yeah, one Pokemon we saw a while back before Greval dropped rocks, so it was Wingull. Very common, but not that useful. Which is the same because, like, in terms of design, I actually kind of like Wingull for some strange reason. Eh. Uh. You're not the only one, I actually used one, professionally. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, not that, not half bad if you get it, if, if you give it Steel Wing. Hmm. Ah, maybe I'll try it sometime. To be honest, I'm kind of like Wing Girl because I, I love seagulls in real life, but I can't, I don't, I never really liked the look of it involved for Pepelion, which is basically a lot of pelican. I just, I, I, don't really see the connection between a seagull and a pelican. I just couldn't get my head around it, in all honesty. Yeah, I... I can understand that, because the thing... Yeah, it speaks for itself. <laughs> and, and yeah, if it's that good, might have to give it a try. Yeah. Ah, yeah, they're not talking about people. Anyway, yeah... The rest of this part's basically just going to be me beating down people on the beach, frankly. Although this guy's also apparently hasn't hasn't had enough because he wants to challenge us some other time. Let's see, poking out registration. <laughs> oh, and she was hiding under the umbrella. The clever little. <laughs> <coughs> and here we go for another double battle: Wing Girl and Manuel versus. My two awesome grass types that are about, let's see, uh, I'd say about nine levels above it. Who do you think is going to win? Hmm, tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, small, on note, uh, one thing, the reason why we faded out back in the cave was because I took the um, time to level them up to what they should have been after the um, boss battle if I was you know, putting the effort in and not just fighting a gym leader under level because I'm an evil man. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and there we see the earthquake nature power. Oh yes. Yeah, that I was, that kind of surprised me out of the blue too. Ooh, I was wondering when we. I was actually wondering a few days ago when the heck would nature power activate earthquake, and then I found out when I used it randomly here. <laughs> And so, with Pika Blue, sorry, Mario, down, we, that's the end of this battle, but pretty much almost the end of this part, although I'm kind of disturbed by that guy being sick, but anyway, that was me, the Jolly Monkey. And me, Spin the Crusader. See ya. <laughs>